With legalization right around the corner, you may soon be around marijuana far more frequently than you once were. Well, even if you aren't smoking it, you could test positive for high levels of THC and even exceed the legal driving limit. A new study out of the University of Calgary looks at the effects of secondhand pot and reveals stunning results. Well, I, um, I didn't know that. I didn't know that it really could have that effect on your body. There is genuine shock and disbelief at how disturbingly easy it is. Just 10 minutes of moderate exposure to pot smoke is enough for your blood levels to exceed the legal driving limit. Is it something that concerns you hearing that? Definitely, definitely. Um, because, I mean, you, I wouldn't know that. I mean, I'd probably feel it or I hopefully would feel it. But if I didn't and got behind the wheel, then that's a problem for me and the public. I really feel for anybody who's like at a party or is like in a social setting where that's happening because they very well could get pulled over. And researchers say it doesn't take extraordinary circumstances for THC to become detectable in the blood and urine of non-smokers. So think about something uh, in an enclosed space, maybe the size of a regular kitchen, all the windows closed, relatively poor ventilation and a joint being passed around while you're having a conversation. Right now, researchers say biologically there's no way to prove it was secondhand exposure versus active consumption. On top of that, no roadside tests are available yet, and police will be relying on subjective tests. It will be contentious, I think, because different people would show different kinds of impairments at different levels. So your bo not all bodies store or process THC the same, and so not everybody would present with the same kinds of impairment at that same level. Putting the legal consequences aside, the Ontario Lung Association is also sounding the alarm on the health effects of secondhand pot. How does marijuana compare to tobacco? What do we know about that right now? Yeah, so again, I mean, we know that they share a lot of the same uh, chemicals, metals, particulate matter as tobacco smoke. 33 of those are known carcinogens, which means that they are cancer-causing agents. While the long-term effects of cannabis exposure are largely unknown, researchers point to the hard lessons already learned as a good indicator of the potential effects of pot. Certainly the devastating health effects of tobacco are well documented and uh, generally well accepted by the public. So we know that uh, certainly its role as a disease causing agent is well documented. So if you're going to use cannabis, don't smoke it. Look for those alternative modes of consumption. Researchers also note that at this point there are lots of unknowns about the longer term effects of passive exposure to marijuana. Public consumption laws are set at the municipal level and at this point different cities are adopting different rules to mediate that exposure. For City News, I'm Tina Yazdani.